Another good nexus that must be watched is the Venus Moon nexus. Venus and Moon are the two female planets. First one. Venus and moon have to be well placed for one to succeed in Devi worship. Devi is, you know, this is like a foreigner concept that Devi is your mother, she is the mother goddess, protector goddess, anyone can worship her, she is very compassionate, etc. etc. You do a wrong worship of Devi, you will get the answer. I remember there was a student, he watching some YouTube astrologers can, who connected Bharni to Ma Kamakya, went to Kamakya and where he came back from there, his life was like disturbed. Now to say this happened because of going to Kamakya certainly is not right. There have to be other reasons behind it. However, Venus moon not well placed 6, 8, 2, 12 to each other is a problematic condition. I will not say that one should not be in Devi worship in that scenario. Because even Ramakrishna Paramahans, the great Devi Sadak have Venus and uh, moon in 212 to each other. So I will not say that this uh, they should not be in Devi worship. But certainly I will say that they should not go uninitiated into Devi worship. First they should search for a good guru and only then they should go into Devi worship. Specifically in those cases when Venus and Moon have a 6, 8, 2, 12 connection both in D1 and D9 chart, first get properly initiated, then go into Devi worship. Specifically in the case of saints who have succeeded in Devi worship, such as uh, Sri Bam Kepa or the Swamiji of Dutya and many more. Venus and Moon have a very good nexus, are generally placed in 311 or in the same house. They get the blessings of Devi. Though Thakur Ramakrishna Paramans is a great exception into it, but he was an avatar incarnation itself, so not talking about it much. According to Gemini, a connection between Venus, Mer Venus Moon sitting together, aspecting each other, being in 311 to each other is a combination for someone having vehicles. I will say the good placement of Venus plus Venus and Moon, good placement towards each other, being in mutual Kendras, Konas to each other, gives one comfort and luxuries in life. For maximum of small, small things in their life, small, small matters in their life, they are almost tension free. They can live tension free. There is no doubt about it. Also, Venus and Moon having a good relationship, sharing a good nexus indicate that even at the old age, person will be liked and supported by many and will not be left alone, which in other cases when Venus and Moon are not well situated from each other, generally at the end of life, the person is left alone and because of his own nature and behavior, people don't like to have connection with them. See, this is because, see, we, you can be male or you can be female. That is another point. But everyone have a male aspect of courage, determination, taking responsibility. And everyone have a male aspect of dedication, nourishing, and these qualities. This Venus and Moon indicate that female aspect of personality that is essential. Specifically in the horoscope of male, Venus and Moon have to be quite powerful for the male to be able to have those woman feelings, woman-like feelings, so that they can have a balanced personality 
in many cases this venous and now see i have to look at in the case of criminals or those who commit crime against women you will see moon and venus are both powerful but both afflicted so what happens venus and moon is not powerful you don't have those female qualities of compassion nourishment etc okay for a female chart this is bad this is a female akin to a male pathetic situation right if female is akin to the male that that is a female having weak venus and moon so nothing in our life can be good specifically marriage because we have the male approach and female qualities are missing it is like uh, my wife growing up a mustache so certainly not a favorable condition to be in that you can be of modern thoughts but your thoughts are your thoughts you cannot superimpose it on your partner and this is such a plenty combined because see partner is marrying a lady so is expecting the lady to be a lady <laughs> he will not want a lady to be a male this is the secret of stri jatak right which those who are uninitiated or those who have don't have much intellect cannot understand certainly right <clears throat> however leaving it aside this venus moon is powerful and afflicted also leads to one not understanding the woman feeling why because this venus moon is powerful they have female tendency but that is turned negative because of affliction so in the case of criminals who have uh, committed crimes against women you will see venus moon both powerful both affliction a condition which should not be there venus moon not powerful is a problematic in the case of spiritually successful people you will see venus moon powerful and affliction free so they have both the male qualities and the female qualities inside themselves and when you have both the qualities in balanced amount only then you can have a balanced personality which can lead you to heights of spirituality otherwise not so the difference between a saint and a sinner is strength of venus and moon both is common between the saint and the sinner affliction to these female planets is the difference between the saint and the sinner which should be very minutely checked now the point is male planets indicate that you work and get things female planets on the other hand indicate the blessing venus and moon well situated strong in rashi and navamsha indicate the level of blessing that one has and venus and moon not well situated powerless weak in rashi and navamsha indicate that one is not blessed and one have to work and get the even for the essential things of life they have to work they are not much blessed okay there is one more point to be seen that venus and moon and their connection with each other see venus and moon should be well placed from each other also for this matter c this is a very common problem and i am not shy to talk about it i think there was a like a student a spiritual aspirant some student many of my students take to spirituality i love to help them uh the female have to yes okay the sexuality from venus and the motherly aspect of moon should not be confused they have to be understood in different context you know you cannot you can create a cloth sew sew create a cloth 
using a needle but cannot do it using the sword you can fight a battle using a sword cannot do it using a needle this so you understand you are that much intelligent i know venus and moon are both important they should not be in a bad situation when venus and moon are not well placed from each other leaving few horoscopes around you see there there is one very strong rule in the horoscope of swami ramkrishna paramhans which supersedes everything that i am telling the bad connection between venus and moon and that superseding condition i am not wishing to tell right now okay so that's why but in the horoscope where venus and moon are not well placed from each other you understand only one aspect of the personality and don't understand the other aspect of personality for the case of ramkrishna paramahans moon is in the lagna and venus is in the 12th house he understands the divine aspect of mother and doesn't understand the another aspect right same in the horoscope of sri shyama charan lahiri ji who was a disciple of mahavatar baba ji you must have heard about him while reading about paramahansa yogananand he was also married and he have a moon and venus in 212 to each other where venus goes to the 12th house and moon goes to the 11th house indicating that he only and 11th house is good house 12th house is bad house indicating that he only understands the maternal aspect of the female and is not concerned with another aspect of the female surprisingly not afflicted that as i already told you venus moon having a bad relationship you will also see in the horoscope of criminals but they will be afflicted in these horoscopes they are not afflicted so this non affliction lead to the good result otherwise there can be a real problem without doubt okay this is the particular reason Uh, <laughs> venus and moon in mutual kendras to each other venus and moon both in the kendra 1 4 7 10 houses both of leads to the condition where one have like physical relationship with those female they are not supposed to have a physical relationship with. to commit a crime in my younger days i was very mean on predicting these things have done it many a times people having a relationship with their cousins etc this surprisingly came true to 90% of the cases but then i stopped doing it these are you know free times when you are sitting free you do such experiment it is good in young age not <laughs> nowadays however venus moon both in kendras and afflicted lead to such combinations indicating that this uh, understanding of a female principle is somehow getting flawed which should be very essentially checked if you want to check the nature character behavior of a person and specifically when you want to match the horoscope for marriage specifically with regard to the male chart because this is something that is very essential to be checked you cannot miss it right so all and all good relationship between venus and moon both of them getting strong gives you enjoyment fulfillment of wishes and desires and blessings in life bad relationship between venus and moon not only take the happiness related to these things from your life but also gives you a flawed understanding of the female principle which can further lead to either making you a saint when they are not afflicted or making you a sinner when they are afflicted this is the only difference 
between the horoscope of a common man, a highly elevated saint, or a highly degraded sinner. Needs to be very closely checked. This female nexus in the horoscope is very, very important because if you don't understand this female nexus, you will not be able to understand how the life of the person goes on this planet female earth. And neither you will be able to understand how much blessing one gets from female Shri Lakshmi. There's one more a small point. I had a friend. I have a friend. He is very highly situated at one of the Sankrachari Mathals. Back then, I think around 2017-18, we were having a discussion. And in that discussion, the thing was like, the Nagaloka, the world of the snakes, opens through Venus. Venus is the king of the world of the snakes. Snakes, Rahugi, enjoy. You see the story of uh, Kaliyamanthan. Right. Snakes are strongly connected to gems, jewels, ornaments, and all these resources. Snakes have Nagamani on their head. That, that is a very rare ornament. These ornaments are indicated by these ornaments, these luxuries, these jewelries are signified by Venus, protected by snakes, Rahu, and Ketu. Venus is the door to Rahu and Ketu. Rahu and Ketu is protecting Venus. One major bumper technique. I will want to share the first one. Venus and Jupiter is from the previous series. The sign lord of Venus and the sign lord of Jupiter well placed from each other. One have blessed lives. Gets all his wishes and desires fulfilled. Not well placed. Wishes and desires are not fulfilled. Person have to settle on whatever they get. The sign lord of Venus and the sign lord of Jupiter are well placed to each other. Even the person having a bad metal life wish to have a good metal life. Either their spouse will change their nature or they will get married to a good spouse. Okay. The sign lord of moon and the sign lord of Venus well placed from each other. One is One is self-sufficient, self-contented, not much affected by the society and the world. They have their own thinking. They have their own thought. No one can disturb them. The sign lord of the Jupiter and the sign lord of the moon, not well placed from each other, two twelve six eight from each other. One is highly, highly dependent on the external factors. Some can say bad word to them, made their, make their whole day bad, ruin their mood. They will not be in the condition to do anything, think on anything. We will become very sad because of external influences. They will ruin their life. That kind of a people who give more importance to others than their, as compared to their own thing, their own thought, their own uh, understanding or something. Okay. Rahu and Ketu. Venus is the door to Rahu and Ketu. Rahu and Ketu protect Venus. When you commit a, any immoral thing related to the house where Venus is situated, Rahu and Ketu get destroyed. 
Rahu and Ketu get destroyed for sure. Okay. When someone disturbs you in those areas where your Rahu and Ketu is situated, then the house their Venus is situated in and the house where that Rashi falls, where your Venus is situated in, gets destroyed. I'll tell you one point. This example. A lady is having Ketu in the seventh house. Okay. A lady is having Ketu in the seventh house and Venus in Libra. She had a boyfriend. That boyfriend was born in Capricorn Ascendant. Libra is the seventh house. This guy, the boyfriend, had a physical relationship with this lady having Ketu in the seventh house, saying that we will get married, exploited her, her for seven, eight months, and then refused, saying, My family members are now not allowing, we cannot continue with the relationship, etc. etc. He knew it since the starting. He never talked to their parents. This lady confronted him later on, went to meet on his sister, etc., etc., came to know. Surprisingly, from even four years after that incident, the boy, because the lady, remember, lady was having Ketu in the seventh house. This boy hurt her Ketu. She was having her Venus in Libra. For this boy, Libra was the seventh house. Even four years after this relationship, this boy was not able to have a stable job. He will find a job, get fired from the job in two months. So you disturb the Rahu Ketu of someone, your house, that house of your horoscope where their Venus is situated, when you superimpose their horoscope on your horoscope, that house gets destroyed. Right? So say, yeah. So say someone is having, uh, uh, say someone is having uh, uh, Venus in Pisces. Okay? And Rahu in the second house. You cheat them for money. Someone having Venus in Pisces, Rahu in the second house, you cheat them for money and wherever your Pisces is there, that house will get destroyed. For how much time? Depending on how big the cheating is. It can get destroyed for a complete lifetime also. This is the unknowing karmic connection. Unknown karmic connection between the horoscopes. I have seen it very true in my experience. You must have also seen it very true. In, you will also see it very true in your experience. Test. Another point. This is the Rahu Ketu being the protector of Venus. All right. There are more things that can be elaborated on it. There are many more things into it. I am not discussing it. Okay. The house where Venus is situated. When the bad result related to that house is going to come, before that, the house where Rao and Kipu are situated will start getting destroyed. For example, if Venus is situated in the seventh house and Rahu is situated in the tenth house, before the problem comes to marriage, the problems will start coming in professional life one year prior to that. Indication that the condition of Venus is going to be bad because the protector of Venus is now getting, you know, bad result, better be careful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and now the point is ki the karmic distribution because Rahu, Venus is the door to Rahu and Ketu. To understand 
the type of karma you are having you have to check the connection between rahu ketu and venus major karma it is based on the house specifically rahu and venus ketu is always seven to rahu rahu and venus ketu rahu 5 9 disperse the knowledge is what you are supposed to do right venus rahu 212 either earning money or getting free from all type of bondage bandhan of maya illusion is the duty is the karma that one is supposed to have i will wish to give you a few examples related to it in the horoscope of sri ramakrishna paramahansa venus and rahu are 311 teacher third house indicate courage hard work upadesh teaching upadesh spoken words spoken philosophy 311 connection to show a path to the world to advise third house to the world and show using your example to the world he is a saint who lived in a metal life and had students and taught the whole world the type of relationship a guru should have with their students with their spouse and with everyone. Swami Vivekanand, Venus, Rahu, three eleven relationship. Once again, then Venus get to have a five nine relationship. Venus Rahu three eleven. Once again, indicates that preaching from the third house, travel, his work, his path, the path he chosen was the karma that he did. and shown to the world how to do it generally in the case of guru and shishya you will see same type of connection between venus rahu 311 in the horoscope of swami vivekanand 311 in the horoscope of ramakrishna paramahansa indicating both are going to do same type of karmas ramana maharshi venus and rahu once again have a 311 relationship third house indicates guru upadesha the advice of the guru advising people showing them the path of austerity and sadhana making your life as an example and demonstrating it to people how to live 311 connection once again third house also indicates yoga at yoga etc once again a 311 connection paramahansa yoganand venus rahu is a 6 8 relationship transformation kriya yoga and telling about a lost parampara of mahavtar baba ji is what he was supposed to do karl marx venus and rahu in 212 to each other freedom freedom of from the exploitation for many is what he induced so the mutual position of rahu and venus gives a hint on what you are supposed to do in this world if venus and rahu both of them are powerful being in own rashi varvakta etc then the karma is big impacting many when they are not that much powerful then the karma is small only impacting your life and life of people around venus and rahu have a very intricate relationship which should be very closely checked between all those people who are 
closely connected to each other parents and child siblings guru shishya all of them only those who have equivalent placement of these planets fulfill the work done by each other or assigned to each other otherwise there can be a problem for example ramkrishna paramahans who is having a 311 connection between venus and rahu came here to teach us about a spirituality way to live a life way to live a life and all these things he was married to shri sharda devi his wife will his wife also continue to do what he want will his wife also fulfill his wishes and desires or his wife will have okay you choose to be a sanyasi i married a person i want to live married a life i am not living with you or etc go will go otherwise she is also having venus ketu 311 relationship ramakrishna paramahansa is having venus rahu she is having venus ketu for male venus rahu connection for female venus ketu it tells you what if two people can they work together support the karma and target of each other or choose their own way father wants their child to do something will the child do that or not if there are venus and rahu or venus and ketu having same type of connections in d1 and d9 son will take on the work that father wants him to do otherwise will choose his another path this should be very closely checked in every horoscope if we want to know about the karmas we have with each other thank you for watching the video have a good day